Good evening, Toastmasters and guests. The latest research from the American Gut Project explained that the average American only has 10% of the biodiversity in their gut. Only 10% of our potential microbiome. And it also explained how if you eat more varieties of plants, that helps your microbiome. But tonight, I want to talk about why it's even more important to breed your microbiome. First, I want you to picture this. It's pitch black and you're in the Redwoods National Forest in Northern California. You're all alone and it's pretty scary. These trees are 350 feet high, 50 feet wide in circumference, but you can barely see them. You just have a little small light on your hat. So you're walking along and your imagination starts wondering, you know, is there going to be a scary animal just come out and kill me? So you think of like a moose with some big antlers running at you full speed. Or a bear on its two feet, eight feet up in the air looking down on you. And you imagine, you know, being set green from without a paddle and getting in the fetal position. And then the mama bear picks you up and takes you back to the den and tries to feed you the latest roadkill. But the paranoia goes away as you take a deep breath. And it's the freshest scent of your entire life. The ancient evergreen forest that's been evolving for 2,000 years, untouched by humans. This ecosystem that has this biodiversity that you're breathing in and it's exchanging microRNA with your skin, all your organs, even your brain has a microbiome. So this story was me back in November. I went on vacation to San Francisco and we went up to the Redwoods and definitely put it to the top of your bucket list. But I didn't realize, you know, I was getting this biological upgrade when I was there. And so I have a few examples, but first, if you think about the, the most latest research, we were told our entire lives that 99% of our DNA is junk. And then we find out here recently that it's not junk, there's non-coding processes. One of those is to make this genetic information, they call it microRNA, and you you would constantly exchange it with everybody you talk to, animals, plants, you know, fungi, bacteria, viruses. You're constantly exchanging, getting updates from your environment. And so the best example, the first one at least, is uh, this Hatsa tribe in Africa. So they still live out in the jungle 24-7, and they have a pretty bland diet. They'll kill a zebra and eat that for two weeks. And then they'll find some honeycombs and have honey for two weeks. And when they tested their microbiome in their gut, it was one of the most diverse microbiomes, you know, that they ever saw because they're constantly getting those genetic uploads from their environment. So the diet wasn't as important. And so the, the latest research on the microbiome showed 15 to 30 percent of the microRNA you're getting is from bacteria, another 15 percent is from fungi that's in your environment, and then 5 to 10 percent from food. So, you know, we all know how food can turn on healthy genes or it can turn on bad genes if you're eating McDonald's every day, but according to this research, it's like more important to be in a diverse environment and breathe in as many different environments as you can. So I took it to the extreme. I have been working outside uh, about six to seven hours. I bought a big portable charger uh, when I work from home. And so I could get about six or seven hours and just breathing in that diverse environment and out at the forest preserve at Thatcher Woods, I see deer going by, you know, a big family of raccoons the last time I was there. Saw a baby deer. But I wanna give you one more example of this. Um, if you think back to Chernobyl, 1986, the nuclear reactor explodes. 
and you know humans evacuated. Now, the humans that did get infected or from the radioactivity had thyroid cancer and a lot of other issues. But if you look back at the site, it, nature is absolutely flourishing. And there's even a fungus growing up on the side of the wall of the reactor. And so this is a, another great example of, you know, if you have a diverse ecosystem, then your microbiome is going to be a fully functioning immune system to where you can fight off toxins. So they measured voles, these are little rats. They measure, measured them for radioactivity and they had the radioactivity, uh, but they were completely fine. They've gone 50 generations now and no you know, ailments. So I just thought that was fascinating. I, uh, you don't have to become a hippie like me and walk around barefoot at the forest preserve. Um, but I wanna end with a message from Dr. Zach Bush, who I learned a lot of this information from. He's a functional medicine doctor, one of many that prescribes nature to his patients. And he started a really cool uh, social media hashtag called Breathe Your Biome. And it's been circling around for the last couple of years. If you look on Instagram, you'll see these just gorgeous, you know, photos of people up in mountains. And that's the message for today. I mean, we know that food can be a healing medicine. I know personally, um, it's very powerful, but now I'm just trying to breathe in as many diverse environments as I can. And when you guys do do that as well, make sure you jump on and hashtag breathe your biome. Thank you.